Welcome back to the Sons of Liberty podcast. My name is Sam. My name is Hunter. And today we're going to be covering a few different topics, but the main one is we're going to be talking about the uh, alleged second uh, assassination attempt on the life of President Donald Trump on his golf, one of his many golf courses in West Palm Beach. Uh, some people are calling, like, apparently the media is calling it an apparent assassination attempt because the dude ever never actually fired his weapons. So they're saying it's like not an assassination attempt. Really weird. It's the same way they tried to memory hole the first legitimate assassination attempts. But in any case. And also on a different note, Lebanon, what's going on with Hezbollah? Israel, the war down there, not down there, over there is going crazy. Pagers. Hezbollah uses pagers to communicate and they've been blowing up lately. Thousands of people have been injured because of them. Who's up with that? Who's doing that? Is it Israel? We'll find out. And also, Maura Healy, the lovely governess of Massachusetts, she appeared on ABC not too long ago, and she was discussing Kamala Harris's record and as well her debate performance and was defending it. Obviously, not a shocker. We'll get into that and a little bit more. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Sons of Liberty podcast. If you found this beneficial to you, please share with your friends and family. We want to get the word out and bring Christ-filled conservatism to New England and beyond with a Gen Z perspective. Without further ado, let's get into the Sons of Liberty, Liberty. podcast. Bad to the bones. Let's rebuild America first. <laughs> you know that guy apparently uh, endorsed Hillary Clinton for president in 2008? Earl Haggard? <laughs> yeah. What? He did a song about Hillary, like, let's put a woman in or something. No joke, dude. I'm not even joking. Wow. We. Um, but that is not what we're here no, to talk well, about. That's actually funny. We reacted to... America First by Merle Haggard, which is J.D. Vance's walkout song to all the rallies now. And and, uh, my dad said to us today, he was like, he watched the reaction video that we posted and he was like, you guys sound like you've never heard of Merle Haggard. He was, he was, it was definitely a disappointed father moment. He was like, what is this? Allegedly, the guy's a country music legend or something. A a legend on the same level as Johnny Cash, which I'm like, Mm. what? I mean, I grew up listening to Johnny Cash, so... I didn't grow up listening to Merle Haggard, but in any case, sorry, we apologize. Uh, we're just showing our showing our age and the, our, our lack of knowledge of Merle Haggard. But let's get into what the uh, title of the video was actually uh, about, the ass- second assassination attempt on the life of Trump. Now, a bunch of people have done, you know, a bunch of conservatives. You know, every, everyone's been talking about this. Like, this is not, there's nothing new that we can bring to this conversation. But I think, um, but we'll just recap it real quick. So what was the, it was, he was, Donald Trump was golfing. He was golfing. And and the way it works is you've got the secret service. They're like, they're around him. They're beside him before you to the east and the west and, you know, other biblical metaphors. Um, And as far as the east is to the west, (laughs) that's where the secret (laughs) service is. And uh, they had secret service like going, like going to the next hole before Trump got there just to scout it out, make sure everything's good. And one of the holes, they were up ahead, they were scouting, and they saw a barrel out of some bushes. So they fired a series of rounds in the bushes. The guy fled. They didn't hit the guy. He fled, and uh, they caught him later. I don't know how far after that, but they caught him later uh, driving on the highway, just pulled him over and arrested him. And I think it was like the Trump International Golf Course or something. I don't know what it was called. It was like 15 minutes from Mar-a-Lago, right in West Palm Beach. Beach. Yeah, And... We know a lot about the shooter because he was very active on social media. And interestingly, he was in uh, some interviews. He was in D.C., very well-connected guy, which is very interesting as well. Um, Not that that's something people don't know already, but um, very well-connected. He fought for a militia in Ukraine. The dude was big on Ukraine. I'm big on Ukraine, all this. Lived in Hawaii, lived in North Carolina. This this was no... um, Matthew Crooks. This was no amateur guy here. This was Thomas Crooks. Whatever. Tom. Thomas Matthew Crooks. We, we can don't, we don't need we to remember just, his name. We don't need to say his first name. 
this guy was well connected, and it's it's very interesting. We'll see more that comes out. He donated to Act Blue, was a Democrat, had a lot of crazy political views. He was rooting for Nikki Haley in the primary, which is interesting. <laughs> Not saying anything about that. But the real thing about this is that how does one get to a place where they want to shoot a presidential candidate? This hasn't happened since Ronald Reagan. It or, or like a month ago when they tried to do it. But it, right, right. You, Before Trump, it hadn't happened <laughs> since Ronald Reagan. Yeah. And in that case, the guy who shot Reagan was was a whack job. He was a psycho. He was trying to impress like some celebrity or something. Some I don't, It was crazy. The dude, it wasn't even really politically motivated. He was like, if I kill Ronald Reagan, this girl will notice me is basically the story. That's a side note. That's a video for another day. But what we have today is the most divided time in our country since the Civil War, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. And the media, without a shadow of a doubt, can be blamed for this assassination attempt. Not just the media, but the politicians who have played into the narrative that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. Democracy. Democracy lowercase d not our capital r republic that we live in yes he's he's belie- he believed it he bought it and he yeah. said trump is if somebody is such yeah. a threat why not take them out yeah and it's the whole argument of of you know because they've equated trump to hitler it's the whole argument of uh uh that the a man i deeply res- uh respect and admire dietrich bonhoeffer the same thing he had to wrestle with dietrich bonhoeffer literally tried to kill hitler and the same arguments he went through like I want, he's like, when we have exhausted all other efforts, we have got to just, we have got to just, just, just destroy evil. That was kind of the overarching argument. We've exhausted all legal efforts, everything. We just got to stop this evil. Like there's no other way. And the way the media paints Trump and the MAGA movement, MAGA extremists, as Biden says, the only option that you are left with is political violence because that is the extent that's that's the that's the picture that the media has painted donald trump in the way he, he, they've painted donald trump is that he is hitler the only way we address this there is we have to kill him now they're not saying that but the what they are implying is calling him a threat to democracy calling him hitler uh, saying we need to take to the streets. And not only their words, but also what they report on and don't report on. They won't report on the rioting in the streets. Well, they report on it, but they they call it a peaceful protest in the riot, you know, the famous the Floyd Palooza riots of 2020, as Charlie Kirk calls it. Uh, they won't report on that, but when they do, they say it's a peace mostly peaceful protest. So it's when it's for a cause that they agree with, they're totally okay with political violence. And Trump falls right into that. He is like number one, top of the list recipient w- would be totally cool if he was taken out. And like I said in the intro, they're memory holding. They memory hold the first one. Literally when it came out, the first articles were loud noises heard at trump rally i mean it was streamed live on fox news my friend's grandmother watched it happen live on fox news the 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 fire he trump drops and the media sees that and they say loud noises heard at trump rally but yet floyd palooza was mostly peaceful pro- protest like do you see the issue do you see the issue loud noises heard at trump like well and it's just what was the thing you said yeah, earlier about so that it was literally my friends called me and were like, hey, Trump got shot. And I was like, you guys are messing with me. And no, he didn't. Yeah. And I go and I'm like, let me look it up. Let me see. Obviously, there should be, if they know about it, there should be news articles about it, right? Yeah. And I look it up and all I see is, oh, he didn't get shot. They just, they don't, no, 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 stop. You guys don't know what you're talking about. It just said that there was loud bangs. We don't know if it was shots yet. Loud bangs, loud noises. Trump falls down at rally like that they were trying to make it look like trump like like was like old and senile and fell and i'm like (laughs) what and they're like no her grandmother watched it live happened he got shot it was obviously anybody who was watching it could tell 
Yeah. So it's not even they don't even have to explicitly even be saying any of the th- these things. But when it happens, and they're even still this one, they're saying an apparent assassination attempt. Oh, he didn't even fire shots at him, and it wasn't that bad. The barrel was out of the bushes waiting for Trump to come to that next yeah. hole of the golf course. They didn't even have a line of sight on it and all this. And and now the FBI, who, like, they admitted, admittedly, the FBI director who is over the case, who is over the Florida area, almost didn't get the job because he had anti-Trump tweets and stuff all over his social media. So he had to delete those tweets. He's clearly an anti-Trump guy. So we're certainly going to get a fair, you know, assessment of things from the FBI, which I'm glad Ron DeSantis is doing his own investigation because he'll get to the, the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. But it's it's not only that they're outright, you know, saying Trump can never be allowed in the White House again, but they're also, like you said, they're not covering the stories accurately. This should be, you know, I, I will give it credit to Biden. He came out. After the first assassination attempt, and he said, guys, we need to we need to lower the temperature. We need to stop. You know, we've done it. He didn't try to blame it on other people. He didn't he didn't blame it on Trump. Biden called Trump after both of them. I'll you know what? I'll give Biden credit on that. Yeah. Have we heard a peep from Kamala other than probably a you know a press release? KJP, Kareem Jean Pierre, was in her press conference and she blamed Trump's rhetoric. For the shooting. Like, you don't do that when somebody gets shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's insane. It's the left that's doing political violence. You know, they make a big deal about Proud Boys and the fine people on both sides, quote. All those things that happened in, you know, what was it, Charlottesville? But that wasn't even violent. Summer of Love was very violent. Summer of love, yeah. All of these things. So, this is on the media, and we're about to see here if they're trying to tell. You, oh, that we didn't say those things. We didn't know that. That's not actually. That's out of context. We have the receipts right here. <laughs> it's crazy. So there's a there's a compilation video that I think Trump put this together, but I don't know. It's, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it reposted all over the place. Um, and it's just basically a compilation of all the times the media has painted Trump as this big threat, as Hitler, whatever. So we're going to watch that and react to that. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels. That this isn't, they're not going to let up and they should not. I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. and Maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there's unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. <laughs> do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. Or may go low, be kicked. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? Biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. And, you would have uh, been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet <laughs> in Donald Trump. And that's a fact. <laughs> Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? Do you remember that? Remember that? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A Missouri state senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. That's crazy. That, that, I... Admittedly, I didn't watch that before we reacted to it just now. That was first time reaction. Oh my gosh. What was that? Who was that lady holding the head of Trump? We're going to have to blur that. What was Kathy that? Kathy Griffith or whatever her name is. She's a comedian. That was a huge thing. In like 2016, she did that. We forgot about it now. But well, she held the that thing. Was, that was yeah. before my political time. But Yeah, she. I remember it. It was a huge thing, and we just forgot about all that, and we forgot about the fact that, you know, Madonna said she wanted to blow up the White House. We forgot about all that. That's insane. So this has been... This hasn't been... I'm genuinely shell-shocked. Like, this has been crazy. This has been nine years in the making. 
you say for nine years a guy's a dictator. You say for nine years that his followers are a basket of deplorables, like Hillary Clinton said. I watched, and I was watching MSNBC, not me. I saw a clip. I I don't know who would ever watch MSNBC on their own. Joy Reid was talking to this, you know, woke activist reporter, and he said, and she was like, "How can anybody support Trump? He's just despicable, despicable." And the guy goes, well, you know, in his very smug, you know, tone, the thing is about Trump and his supporters is that his supporters are just as despicable as he is. You know, these are vile, hate, hateful people. So then all the Trump supporters on, on Twitter, uh, you know, they did despicable me trends with pictures of them <laughs> in Trump hats and tr- pictures of them with Trump and all these different things. So it's like the media, if you don't know it by now, the media... It's not there to report the news. They're not there to, you know, oh, look at this breaking story. When has the media ever put out a story that you never knew about before? That, like, everybody didn't already know? When? They put those people in jail. Edward Snowden, when there's actually a story, when there's a whistleblower. Julian Assange. Oh, they throw those people in jail. Because they're actually, you know... James, James O'Keefe. Why is he not on... A national news station. Oh, because he actually reports stories that are real. Yeah. I don't care if it's Fox. I don't care if it's CNN. The media is there to divide. It's there to be propaganda for whichever side. Yeah. And one side has gotten so, so, so vile. There's been two attempts on, uh, you know, two people wanting to kill him and plenty more. Well, based on this video, plenty more, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to realize we need to first of all stop watching it, the news. Yeah. Turn to alternative sources of media, like ourselves, yours truly, Sons of Liberty, um, or local New England news. Yeah, and stop. Paid for by the Sons of Liberty podcast. <laughs> Anyways, what? <laughs> stop scrolling through Twitter all the time. I do it, but stop believing everything you see. Yeah. Because. The system is meant to lie to you. It's meant to divide. And it's meant, honestly, for both sides. They want, you know, the left would love it if somebody tried to assassinate Kamala Harris and didn't succeed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They would. Because it's good for the media. It's good for press. It's good for coverage. Because then you can go blame Trump. You can go blame all these people. Well, yeah, and then it gives them a reason to then crack down. Yeah, the, the Hitler did that uh, in um, in Germany. He he, uh, he literally had his own soldiers dress up as Jewish people, go burn down a building, and then he said, "Oh, the Jews are attacking us. We got to clamp down more." So he it was yeah. Did it, 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 I mean this is classic classic dictator you, you you capitalize on people's fear you seize power and we haven't and even talked about capitalizing the, on people's fear all the prosecutions against trump as well oh my gosh yeah never I mean, mind that's that just, the fact that he's facing 700 years in federal prison that's let besides that not a big deal <laughs> yeah you know that's i mean <laughs> but what's what's encouraging because we want to leave this on a note of encouragement what i love about this is that I thought of this once you said the thing about the despicable memes that the Trump supporters are sharing. <laughs> Trump has raised up a Republican Party. Trump has reformed the, this new Republican Party, this Uniparty, the new, the better version of Uniparty under freedom. You know, f- from people all the way, you know, your theonomists all the way to Elon Musk are now all under this one movement. <laughs> he has formed this movement to when an insult is thrown they let it roll off their back and not only let it roll off their back they use it as fuel to keep moving forward he has created he has created resilience in the republican party like i've never seen in my life he has strengthened the spine of many cowards and all it takes is one man to strengthen the spine of many cowards as the as the fame famous quote uh says that that's the coolest part about all this. Yep. And that's not specific to the assassination attempt number two. Uh, sorry, apparent. Whatever. <laughs> and also, it will feel so much better 
when Trump wins if you get out to vote in November okay. 5th. So use this. Yeah, use this as let your fuel to the fire be. All right. You think I'm a deplorable? The least I can do is go vote for Mr. Deplorable. And f- find five more. <laughs> for, for find Mr. five Trump. more if I'm in a swing state. If you're in Massachusetts, find a local candidate. Don't focus on Trump. Well, vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. Don't say that. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, I'm saying... We can take Trump. We can do it. Sorry. 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 But specifically, if you're in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona, New Hampshire, or uh, Michigan, if you're watching, go register your family. Text... Well, don't register other people. That's illegal. Um, What do you mean? To register other people for voting. You have to register yourself to vote. Get... Your family members to register to vote. Yes, that's you know what I meant. Don't be. Well, you're no, semantic. I'm saying for the viewer. I'm not, you're semanticking. Semantic, We're gonna have dude, the I'm link. I'm not semanticking, dude. We're I'm, gonna have the link in the comments to register to vote. Share it with your family members. Tell them how to do it. If they need help, fill it out for them. If they need help, that's allowed. If they're geriatric and they're old, help them fill it out. It's fine. Mm-hmm. We need to use this as an opportunity not to complain, but to to act. Yep. So do it. So alternative media sources, number one. Number two, vote for Trump on November 6th, 5th? 5th. Oh, boy, that was bad. That was a bad moment. Vote for Trump in November. (laughs) And don't let the propaganda divide you. Be the bigger person. Be Christ. Be little Christs in this world of Satan, uh, in this world of Antichrists. Not today. So there we go. Not today, Move Satan. Move the microphone so the camera can see it. <laughs> not, not today, Satan. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Well, amen. amen On to a different note, to switch here, uh, some other people are being assassinated, and it is not Donald Trump, and it is the kind of people that you would want to be assassinated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hezbollah, the lovely terrorist group that is you know, in cahoots with Iran and all that, um, they have been blowing up recently, and I'm not talking about on Twitter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so what has been happening is... That can't be okay. <laughs> is uh, Israel, they ha- so basically what happened, just to, give, to lay the foundation, the background. <laughs> they, uh, Hezbollah uses pagers to communicate. Because Israel has such good surveillance that they hack into their phones and find out. So the pagers are much harder to, it's impossible to hack a pager. So what Israel did is, oh, we can't hack the pagers. We will insert bombs in them and have them detonate on a timer. So what is happening? Explosive devices in pagers. How based is that? (laughs) Very based. So what they did is, is they set these off to explode and... 3,000 people have been injured by these. And I know there's some collateral fire, I'm sure. Um, And, you know, two children have died. That's really? tragic. Yes. But they've been able to take out 13 and, you know, disarm thousands of Hezbollah, Hezbollah agents. And what a... G- imagine that. Who would have thought of that? The U.S. allegedly didn't know about this uh, operation until... After the fact, Israel has, this isn't a conspiracy theory. Israel has admitted to it. Israel did it. They're proud of it. They're saying they're on a new phase of the war. Um, and this is how wars are going to be fought nowadays. Yeah. I mean, thinking outside the box or outside the pager, I guess. Um, and they did it with their walkie talkies as well. It was a two day thing. It happened uh, today, uh, it was just being filmed on a Wednesday. Um, so two days, walk, one day was pagers, one day was walkie talkies, and they've blown up over 3,500 people basically with them. Um, all so, bad guys, I hope. All bad guys, we hope. Um, other than two kids. So, you know, while on one side of the world, we try to kill people who are, you know, actually trying to do good for their country in another country, they are blowing people up who deserve to be blown up and who are, you know, assuredly going to kill more people if they don't get killed. Yeah, this is this is an actual Hitler situation where it's like, yeah, they want Jews to be dead. Yes. So, um, yeah. you know, that's biblical justice right there. Let's just be encouraged by the fact that terrorists are being blown up across the world. That's basically the point of that story. 
it's hard to glory in war, especially when it's not your own. True. And it feels wrong. It feels wrong to do that. I'm not going to lie. To glory in the death of thousands of people while evil and deserving of it. Well, I don't glory in it. I mean, maybe I just did. But um, it is a somber reminder to those Hezbollians watching that you should repent and believe. That is, that is not our viewer base. Just as like a reminder, those are not the people we are appealing to. That you should repent. Dog, if the Sons of Liberty comes up, if you are a Hezbollian terrorist and the Sons of Liberty, this is going to sound so racist. If you're a, te- let's just say terrorist. If, if you're a terrorist and the Sons of Liberty podcast comes up on your recommended feed, please click the little three button, three dot thing on the side and then say, do not recommend channel. Just hit that, please. What are you saying? Do not, I, I don't want terrorists watching the Sons I of Liberty I care podcast. about you if you're a terrorist. No, what? Listen, Stop. terrerrists need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, I can so agree with that. So all I'm saying is, but they don't need know, the Sons of Liberty podcast. I'm, I don't want if them. If that's where they're getting the gospel the from, Liberty yes, podcast. sir, they do. So, no, I don't care. I'll take the viewers, whatever they are. And if they're hearing the gospel, that's a good thing. So I'm not glorying in these people's deaths, although justice is of God. So if, even if I was, maybe I am, I don't know. It is a somber reminder that we are blessed to live in America, one. And that two, death can happen at any time. You, it might even be by your pager that you're trying to talk to, to your terrorist ringleader. So maybe don't participate this in those so things. so awkward. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Death could happen at any time. Repent and believe the gospel. <laughs> that Amen. is my point. No, it's true. That is my point. You never know when your pager is going to blow up. <laughs> what a bit, dude. What a bit. I did not oh, expect that segment to go that my way. Gosh, dude! I just I was I was feeling honest. I had to be honest with the with the with the liberal well, types. We 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 can circle it. We can circle it around. I mean, you can you can find the gospel there. You can find the ball. No, it's true. You can find the gospel in pagers blowing I up. I guarantee you, no. people like Victor Marx could tell us a story about how he converted a terrorist because, you know, he does wedding conferences, marriage conferences in uh, in the Middle East. I believe in Afghanistan. Yeah. So. Yeah, and this is not this is not a joke. When you're this is how the gospel works. The gospel should be you are faced with the reality that you are going to die. And if you die without repenting and without Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. And so the same principle applies to a Hezbollah terrorist. If you don't repent and stop what you are doing, you might get blown up by a pager. That's how it works. Because God's justice will be served. It yeah, will happen. It's true. It's true. And he can use an unjust military to do that, by the way. Yeah. Whether Israel was justified for it, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. If you're engaging in, in that kind of act, your time is running out. And your time is short. And that applies to every aspect of life. Yeah. That it is the time, the day of the Lord is today. So I don't know how we got from pagers to that. Page is blowing up to that, but I will take it. Um, in other news, <laughs> I just, man, I just love this podcast. This is just, we're trying a new format. If you guys can't tell, we're trying a format called uh, organization. Let us know if you enjoy it. <laughs> let us know. So comment lettuce, L E T T U C E, in the comments if uh, you like the lettuce. Form. Lettuce. You mean, that's not, how do you spell lettuce? Oh, Lord. Is that how you spell lettuce? Yes. Oh, okay. Never mind. Comment let us in the comments if you'd like our new format and you've made it this far. With that being said, let's not get distracted. The whole point of this is that we have organization and we actually know what the next topic is. And true. Sam knows what the next topic is Very as true. well. So we're going to go from Trump assassination attempt to pagers blowing to up, ba- pagers to blowing up the, and gospel, the gospel to the gospel to, to Maura Healy appeared on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> There's a point. You There's won't point. find this anywhere else. There's a point. You will not find this on any other show. Th- no other one. The not ability, one. the ability, the ADHD, the ADHD podcast goes crazy. Oh my gosh, dude! There's no like no transitions. We don't have any ad breaks. So there's nothing to buffer this. We can maybe do like a fade or something. It's just. <laughs> 
Amen. Maybe the awkward giggles are the transition. <laughs> But Maybe. like we don't have like the Michael Knowles level transition abilities. True. We're, we're working on it. We're cultivating those skills. Speaking, uh, the Lord oh, is working in I our hearts. Let's, let's, Speaking of people who need to repent and who need the gospel and who will die in their sins if they do not repent, Maura Healy. There we go. We should we should play that short where I talked about <laughs> if you a little Sons of Liberty lore if you guys have been around back when we did a lot of shorts. Right, what did Maura Healy do? <laughs> Go find the short on our channel called Maura Healy Don't Lecture Me or something like that. Just watch it. Don't share it. Just watch it. <laughs> Just watch it. Just watch it. <laughs> Although if we start getting too much ad revenue on that video, they might That's true. <laughs> they might flag us. We might have to we might have to like turn off the monetization on that video. Anyways. Okay. So more Healy ap ap appeared on ABC a few days ago, and she was talking about Kamala Harris defending her record and uh, defending her de debate performance. And actually, the host at that time on ABC was doing pretty well, at least the part that I saw. We're going to react to the full eight and a half minute uh, clip with more Healy, our lovely governess of Massachusetts. Uh, so, as we're watching this, I realize as as I like watched this a little bit earlier, I realized, wow, I didn't know Maura Healy sounded like this. I kind of expected like a really macho lesbian, like lesbian macho voice, like something's like whoa, like that. That is not that. That is that is not a woman. She has a very nice voice, soft, feminine, like, cute. Wasn't gonna use those words. <laughs> I was gonna maybe say like feminine, like awesome. I love it, um, dude. You got it. That's wild. <laughs> that's what. What you called boy? I hear these voices, cute, dude. That's that's. Let's crazy. get into it. Our viewers want to get that's into it. Crazy, you're you're like this is a cats and dogs kind. You're just getting distracted with the whatever. The squirrels. I I was just saying. I just had to make that comment. Her voice is nice. That's all I'm saying. It's not. I mean, yeah. All right. That's, let's. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stop there. And let's react to this video. I intend to be a president for all Americans. Vice President Kamala Harris making her closing argument at Tuesday's debate on ABC. I'm joined now by Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey, clearly a supporter of Kamala Harris. You know, Democrats said quickly that Kamala Harris won the debate. In fact, our poll found 58 percent of the voters thought she was the clear winner. And yet that performance did not overall move the needle. They're they're basically in the same place as before the debate. Does that surprise you? No, not at all. I, Martha, we know that this is going to be a close race. And Kamala Harris says that she's an underdog. But what's important is that she and Tim Walls have built a campaign for a close race. They're opening an unbelievable number of offices around the country, tons of staff, tons of volunteers. Um, the enthusiasm has been really strong. And I think what's very important also is that she and Tim are playing for every voter. They're going to red counties. They're going to red districts, right? Because as she said in her closing argument, I'm going to be a president for all Americans. You may not agree with me on everything, but I'm going to be here for you and your family. And one thing that the debate demonstrated to me, at least, is that Kamala Harris is about you. She's about the American people. She's thinking about your family. Donald Trump's just about himself. Remember, Kamala Harris is the one who's out there saying she's going to cut taxes for 100 million Americans. She's going to provide a tax credit to families with children. She's going to produce more housing around the country so we can lower housing costs. She's focused on lowering the cost of prescription drugs and groceries. Governor, I, what have I we heard from Donald Trump beyond beyond the, 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 the pets and the like. So, you know, the debate, we've moved on from the debate. It's about the campaign. Governor, I, I want to go back to the debate because that was important. And I want to go through a few things that Kamala Harris said. I want to ask you about her comments about the military. She said during the debate this about the U.S. military. Let's listen. As of today, there is not one member of the United States military who is in active duty in a combat zone in any war zone around the world the first time this century. 
Our fact checkers found that to be false, and I have a lot of experience in that area as well. There are currently 900 U.S. military personnel in Syria, 2,500 U.S. troops in Iraq. All have been under regular threat from drones and missiles for months. We also have action in the Red Sea. We also, every single day, the Navy SEALs, Delta Forces, special operators uh, can be part of any sort of deadly raid. So why would she make that claim? Good question. I think what's important here, Martha, is that Kamala Harris, in contrast to Donald Trump, demonstrated herself to be commander. And red herring. <laughs> we are in a world where there are all sorts of conflicts, and it's all the more reason we need somebody who's serious and who supports the military. And just remember, but Governor, uh, but Governor, excuse me, but she said she there is not one member of the United States military who is an active duty in a combat zone. That is not true. You say she demonstrated her ability to be commander in chief, but did she not know about these people in Syria and Iraq? Dang, why this would is she impressive. say that? Look, that was a comment. That was a comment in a debate. I think the point that she was trying to make was a broader point. Fact. And of course, we have military in place all around this country. Wait. That's important. We're the United States of America. Factual. Good job. Good job, Maura Healy. Yes, it was a comment during a debate. That's definitely what true. A way, what a way to just like acknowledge and then just dismiss. <laughs> so when you're pressed on, it's like, okay, fine. I'll at least acknowledge that she said it. <laughs> but she, So she didn't make any... Uh, any claim either way she's like yes okay fine this was a thing that was said moving on <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's just so politician he's so slimy she, doesn't she have like a nice voice though she's got a nice voice i will give her that she proved her ability to be a commander-in-chief even though she doesn't know who she's commanding is actually in you know active duty and also you just said she said well you know she proved her ability as commander in chief is she talking about the debate performance is she talking about the administration that she's currently running so now she's trying to defend the record let's just assume it seemed like she was talking about her debate performance but then so by her debate performance she proves that she is the a proper command a good commander in chief because somehow she defended her record i guess but then she goes on to say well it was just a comment in a debate like debates don't matter so it doesn't matter so I don't understand how those two phrases, like how those two sentences yeah, create one never cohesive mind. thought. I, maybe that's just me. Never mind the whole uh, Afghanistan thing. No, not at all. But now she's going on right now about how she loves her military. But it's so funny. Like this is just, I mean, we on the, on the uh, conservative, we in the conservative movement, we've, we've grown accustomed to politicians lying, obviously, and avoiding questions. Red herrings, obviously, is when you avoid the question. That's the logical fallacy. And so I, I, I kind of want to go back. I'm not going to, but the moderator, not the moderator, the host, ABC host, asks her about like, hey, why did she say this? About that there were no more active duty members. And Maura Healy says, okay, now I'm just going to, uh, now I'm just going to close, uh, now I'm just going to open up my drawer Move to this way, open up my drawer on military uh, one-liners, and I'm just going to start pulling out of there of my of military one-liners. Of Kamala, Kamala Harris supports the military, and and we love our military, and all this stuff across the United States about we're we're united and blah blah blah, and uni police and fire and military, and we love them and we serve them, blah blah blah. We you know we sh they should get tax credits and blah blah blah. Like it's like okay, that's that drawer. Okay, you pull them out. Let's just close that drawer and let's move on to something else. Pull that out. Oh, uh, immigration. Well, we love uh, Republicans are racist. Uh, immigration. We, we you know we need to you know. We need. If they're not eating dogs and cats in in, uh, in Ohio. Like that's that's how politicians talk. Is they have their they have their drawer of one liners for each individual subject. And he's like, okay, ABC host brought up uh, military. Let's let's pull that drawer. Let's take those one liners out. Don't don't address the question, but just take it. This is probably media. This is probably what you, you learn in media training. I don't know. I never do it. I'm never going to do it because I think that's a bunch of BS. But. Um, that's probably what they teach you. It's like, yeah, when they bring up a topic, when they bring up, when they allude to a topic in a question, talk about that topic and avoid the question. That it's like, just like textbook, cla textbook classic politician. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah, but, I don't think we need so, to hear more from her. More from she, Mora. No, dude, 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 dude. I know we don't need to, but can we just? Please, please. What does she say? I don't know. I haven't heard this. 
It's going to be a whole much more gobbly. We don't need more gobbly. We'll cut it out if we. We're not politicians. We don't need to hear more gobbly gook. We've 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 exacerbated the point. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever. I literally said we we're going to listen to the whole clips. Now we're just lying to our viewers. We lied to our viewers. We listen. The point is, uh, politicians don't have much to say. <laughs> Um, is that the point? I just I just like the Massachusetts content, and we finally got content. We do. For Massachusetts. But I, I think that it's interesting how this this is content. You know what's content? Why is Maury Healy going out on the Kamala Harris defending train? Why is she doing interviews with ABC? Does she want a job in the Kamala Harris administration? Oh. Probably. That's what I've heard. Her term's up in 2026. She could easily slip right. I hope so. Slip right, slip Man, right out of there. she's terrible. Like, give us an opportunity to, so we're not facing an incumbent in 2024. Well, she, Maura wasn't an incumbent either. True, but I also don't want to, I don't like, now I'm like hoping, I don't want Kamala to become president so that we can get, have an easier chance of electing Republican That is the governor. debate. Do we want Kamala Harris president so that, sacrifice the rest of the country for Massachusetts? I mean, if you're having a local mindset, Theoretically. Theoretically, but no. But also, that wouldn't solve the problem anyway, because sure. they're just going to come up with another Democrat, and they're going to spend $10 million, and they're going to get them in. <laughs> this is fair. So, plus, Massachusetts is like 140 to 20, whatever, Democrats to Republican. It's crazy. End the one-party rule. That's the goal of this. How do we end the one-party rule? Exposing politicians like Maura Healy. Yeah. How are we going to do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know, but I don't like her. <laughs> she doesn't have very many good things to say. She's a liar. That's our unique commentary for today. <laughs> Here we go. I don't like her. <laughs> She's annoying. <laughs> uh, her voice. I, no, but her voice is like so nice. Though. It is. It's 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 soothing. It's, some have said I that will her say it's voice captivating. is cute. No, you said that. Captivating. That's crazy. Okay. Before our new format of organization it's supposed to be it's supposed, supposed <laughs> to be that now we're going to wrap up but we want to talk about what the lord is doing a couple years ago this lovely gentleman from the united kingdom what is his name adam smith connor our beloved brother in christ adam smith connor and I want you guys to understand this, the depth of this story, okay? What this means, not only for Adam in the UK, but for the church and for the world. Because in America, we have lived in, in a world where we are able to express our religion freely. But they're coming after that. And we, we've kind of known that they're coming after that. But this story, this guy... His ex-girlfriend murdered his baby in the womb. And he was out at an abortion clinic simply praying. In Bournemouth, England. In Bournemouth, England. Bournemouth, England. Not even Bournemouth. No, it was born. Born. Bournemouth. It should be the name of the politicians there because they're a bunch of pigs. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> simply praying. And he got arrested. Because you know what the law is in the UK? There is a, what do they call it? A buffer zone at near abortion clinics. A buffer zone where you can't go and ask women uh, to give up their baby and to save their baby and to offer them, you know, care. No, you can't do that. And apparently you can't pray in this buffer zone either. He violated it. They call it a public space protection order. So we have spa safe spaces on public property now where you can't yeah. pray for... In your head. He was praying, praying in his head. in his head. Yeah. And he I got arrested. Like, this public space protection order, it prohibits people... I'm reading from the Christian Post here. I'm just going to read this verbatim. It prohibits people from, quote, protesting, namely engaging in an act of approval slash disapproval with respect to issues related to abortion services by any means, including graphic, verbal, or written means, prayer or counseling within a certain distance of the abortion facility. Critics of the public space protection order contend that the legislation is ambiguous and amounts to a violation of free speech rights. 
The law firm ADF UK, Alliance Defending Freedom UK, is representing Smith Connor as li- as litigation surrounding the matter continues. Blah blah blah. Uh, Smith Connor says he had quote served for twenty years in the British Army Reserve, including a tour in Afghanistan to protect the fundamental freedoms this country is built upon. I continue that spirit of service as a healthcare professional and church volunteer. It troubles me greatly to see our freedoms eroded to the extent that thought crimes are now being prosecuted in the UK. And that, my good friends, is where Smith Connor has hit the nail on the head. We have never seen a more potent, clear example of the literal thought police in action. We use that as a euphemism in America, the term thought police. It is a reality in the United Kingdom now. And like Hunter said, there have been a few cases across. I I know there's a case in Michigan, at least, where, where a grandma was arrested for praying in her head silently. This is where things are coming to. And it's all started in the UK. The postmodern neo-Marxist communist, like underlying communist ideologies that have been, whose seeds have since grown into uh, large pricker bushes in, in Europe. Those seeds have been planted in America and they're beginning to bear fruit. It is coming. Pastors, be warned. Do not roll over. I love the church, but this is not the time to put fake unity and high church attendance numbers over truth and the gospel. This is not a time to prioritize getting along over babies in the womb and our fundamental rights as not only Americans, but as speaking beings. We believe in the First Amendment as Christians not because it's just what that old document, the Constitution, says— We believe in it is because in the beginning, God spoke, said, let there be light. God is a speaking being. He spoke the earth into motion. And when he created us, he created us to be speaking beings. That is the distinction. God created everything with everyone, everything and everyone with distinctions, good and evil, right and wrong, uh, uh, male and female, um, you know, nature and man. And that one of those distinction is distinctions is nature and man, animals and man, man as in man and woman, uh, humanity. Humans are different because we have the ability to think and to speak and to reason and to use logic. That is what we must defend. That is free expression. That is why it's our First Amendment right. And I believe it's totally not only okay for you as a pastor to talk about that, excuse me, but I believe it's a necessity because if we don't do that now, if we prioritize preaching the gospel, which when, when that, when even, when an evangelifish pastor says that he's not meaning the actual gospel, he's talking about a watered watered down, compartmentalized motivational speech, motivational speech that isn't actually applied to every day. It's just a Sunday morning worship and then you leave it the rest of the week. When these weak evangelifish pastors prioritize preaching a good motivational sermon over the real gospel, that is when we are going to start having to preach the real gospel from prison. Right. And that's okay. I mean, the, the times that the church has thrived the most is in times of great hardship. And that's the times that it's grown. But why do we have to let it get there? We don't. We don't have to just let that happen. Obviously, our aim is Jesus Christ and the gospel, and that has to be our number one goal. And we can't get caught up in the, in the 
the right versus left, the he said, she said, whatever they said. <laughs> and like Hunter said, get off Twitter. I mean, I know we love X. I know it's great. Like, thank you, Elon Musk. But like, just touch grass. Like, just get out. Like, touch love grass. your neighbor. Go serve in your church. Tithe more than you need to. Save babies. Give, save babies. Adopt. Like, adopt. like, go live out the gospel. If you're a lay Christian, remember that this job doesn't just lay on pastors. It's on you as well. To go out there, instead of spending your time golfing, you can golf. Instead of spending your time playing video games, instead of spending your time watching TV, scrolling X, all of these things, go live the gospel. Yeah, That's what America needs more than anything else, more than we need Trump to win, more than we need, you know, the Supreme Court to keep making good decisions, more than we need, you know, even, you know, anything. Literally, what's more valuable than Christ and living out Christ? Nothing. Because yeah. everything else will turn to dust. Yep. This song is called Monday Morning Faith. It's by SEU Worship, uh, Southeastern University down in Florida. And unbelievable song. It's it's all about don't just have it be a Sunday morning faith. Have it be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning faith. Let it invade your life. Let the gospel invade your life. And our ruling class hates that. Hitler was fine with a Sunday morning faith. Stalin was fine with a Sunday morning faith. I'm not just making that up. I'm dead serious. They were. Like, they, were, they didn't want to close down the churches. They wanted to co-opt the churches. They wanted to take the churches that would comply because we just preach a motivational sermon. They said, we just preach the gospel. They wanted to co-opt those churches. Be like, okay, yeah, you can preach your gospel. Just like, cool. Keep it on Sunday morning, because if you dare let that spill over into Monday, you're dead. Sorry, that's probably really loud in the microphone. <laughs> you're out. Not, not, not doing that. And that's when Dietrich Bonhoeffer in Germany, he started the Confessing Church, which was a branch off of the state Lutheran church at the time that was, bow that was bending the knee to Hitler. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer went and started the Confessing Church, and they were... They had to meet in secret. They their seminaries were they were uh, busted by the Gestapo at, at a certain time because they had to meet like it was all underground. So when you actually stand up to tyranny and preach the real gospel and let it spill over into let the gospel live spill over into the rest of your week, the ruling class, in this case the the uh, UK police officers that arrested this man, the, peop the, people who, the, the people in parliament who drafted this legislation and passed it, they will come after you. But let that, like I said earlier, and I know this applies more to just Trump supporters, but like I said, how Trump supporters have learned to just let, roll off, let insults roll off their bat and they back and then use it as motivation. Christians now need to take a note from the secular Republicans and let these attacks roll off our back, realize God is in control, and then keep pressing forward. Amen. And, and that's yeah. To, to close, if as a Christian, you go out and you speak the truth to your culture, you will either change your culture or you'll be martyred by it. And if you're martyred by it, that will make even, you know, you will see the fruit of that play out later because you'll be looked back upon, whether it be in heaven or later in history, as a hero of the faith, as is written in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. So let's be heroes of the faith, not seeking to get martyred, but seeking to change culture. And if we get martyred along the way, well, you know who else got martyred? Our Savior. So be little Christs. Amen. Amen. Be little Christ in this world of Antichrist. I love it. What a great message, you guys. Oh, excuse me. I had to end that with a uh, with a with a belch. <clears throat> Thank you so much for watching. The sun. We that couldn't be too serious. I had to leave it on a, on a light note. Uh, thank you so much for watching. My name is Sam Mealy. My name is Hunter Young, and we are 
the, the Sons, Sons of, of Liberty, Liberty podcast. podcast thing show. What? Episode. 47,000.